Hi, today I'm going to be talking about the Stanley 45 combination plane. The Stanley 45 was uh, marketed with the tagline 7 planes in 1 because it could function as a beading and centre beading plane, a plough, a dado, a rabbit and filster, a match plane, a sash plane and a slitting plane. There are three main parts. Uh, a main stock, a sliding section, and a fence. The cutter is held in the main stock through this groove. This spin wheel allows adjustments in depth, and the cutter is held in with a cotter type pin through here tightened up by a wing nut on the back. On the reverse side there's an area here which would carry a slitting knife. There's a depth gauge with an adjuster nut at the top and down here you can see there's provision for a scoring knife. The main stock carries two parallel rails onto which the sliding section and the fence can be attached. The sliding section is attached to using the two thumb screws. It also carries a scoring knife or spur and it has an additional depth gauge. The fence is also carried on the parallel rails there's an adjustment on the fence. It's not on all the models, some of the early ones didn't carry it, but it allows us to adjust the fence which is a lot easier than just moving it on the parallel rails. The plane originally came with two sets of parallel rails, a short set and a longer set, depending on how far away you were from the edge of the work you want to reference. And it also came with this groovy little device which attaches on the rails and gives us support when we're further away from the fence. Let me just cover the main adjustments on the plane. Starting on the main stock we have a depth adjuster with an adjustment mechanism and a locking thumb screw and we can wind that up and down and lock off Beneath that you'll see there's a spur for cross grain work and that's got three different spurs on it and if we release the little screw we can twist all of those out of action or twist a, a sharp one through to work with. Next along the plane you'll see this wing nut that tightens up the blade the blade is inserted with the notch going towards the main stock into the groove and hopefully you can see here a little notch engages in a pin on the adjustment mechanism. Pressed home against the stock and the thumb screw lightly tightened. That allows adjustment now for the depth of cut. When the depth of cut is set we just tighten up on the locking thumb screw. For the narrowest of blades we only use the main stock because there's sufficient support for the back of the blade. But on anything from a quarter of an inch upwards we use the sliding section which adds support behind the blade and the additional spur for cross grain work. As you can see the closest we can get those together is a quarter of an inch. Now for reasonably narrow blades that are over a quarter of an inch we move the sliding section out so that the side of it 
and the spur are in line with the side of the blade. If we have a wide blade, say an inch or so, we tend not to move the sliding section all the way over unless we need to use the spur. The reason being there's a lot of blade in the middle here that's unsupported and it tends to move a bit and the cut is not so great. Back on the main stock, if we come a little bit further along, we see a thumb screw here and another what looks like a depth stop. This is where a splitting knife can be fitted. Fixings for the parallel rails are these machine screws through the main stock. A couple of things to check on these planes uh, to make sure you get the best possible work from them is that the soles of the main stock and the sliding section are nice and straight and smooth. Uh, that they're flat along their length. When they're coupled up together, just make sure we don't get any gap along the length. The spurs should be well sharpened, sharpening on the bevel side with just a light pass on the flat side to take off any burr. The reason for that is we want them to stay right on the edge of the sole here and if we were to, to grind too much material off the face then uh, we'd move the position of the, the cutting edge within the line of the blade and then they wouldn't be functioning as they're meant to. All the depth gauges should be lovely and smooth too. Something that can often be a, a bit of a pain is when releasing the blade the cotter pin doesn't want to come out for a long time. This little pressed steel uh, yoke I suppose you'd call it which catches in the collar of the, the wing nut seems to flex too much and it's a few turns before it will actually spring the, uh, the cotter pin out of the way and loosen the blade. The depth adjuster is quite a delicate mechanism and you should not use it when the blade is clamped tightly in the plane. It's quite easy to break the pin off or to break the top of the notch in the blade. Clearly it's quite important that the fence is parallel with the main stock when it's running on the rails. You can check that just by putting it on the rails with just the main stock and then moving them together. I haven't tuned this plane up yet and I think you can see the fence is touching at this end and we have a gap at the front. Not a huge gap but it's worth packing out the facing strip on the fence so that we are actually running parallel. Positioning of the parallel rails in the main stock is entirely up to the user. We obviously need enough space to carry the sliding section if we're using it and the fence section but as long as we've got enough room there, we can move any excess of those rails over to the right hand side, which would help with balance of the plane and maybe allow you to get into areas that otherwise you'd be restricted. The plane comes with these short uh, four and a half inch rails. And these longer rails, which extends the range that the fence can be set away from the stock 
and therefore how far you can reference from the side of the stock to produce a groove or a bead. The fence by design either faces inbound like so which gives you a, a rather narrower offset or you can actually use it outbound and then we're not using the the facing strip but we're using the back side of the metal casting here of the fence and that gets us a lot further away from the ed edge of the work it's also quite acceptable to use the fence on the right hand side if we're using the fence a long way away from the main stock clearly the fence is hanging off the edge of the work so we have all this area here and the leverage weight of the fence pulling the plane this way and to help overcome some of that Stanley came up with the cam stop and because of its shape the position it's clamped onto the rail will adjust the height the plane is sitting at and we can lock that off with the screw to give us full support the only problem with that is every cut you make the plane is going deeper into the work and so you have to reset the cam stop slightly lower for every stroke of the plane in practicality you probably take two or three strokes then reset it another two or three and that will save a lot of time I hope you found that useful uh, the 45 is quite complicated there are a lot of parts um, a lot of different adjustments that can be made on it uh, I haven't covered absolutely everything there uh, the setting up of the plane for different tasks I will be covering in separate videos uh, just to make things a bit simpler and keep the, the videos shorter hopefully you'll dip into those as and when you need them <laughs>